Hey, it's Jim, and today we're going to take a look at using Synfig Animation Studio, which is free and open source software, to create an animated logo. So Google has this G logo that they animate in different ways, and we're going to essentially recreate a similar animation where we break it into little dots that do an animation that hop back to the original G logo. So we have that exported here, and it's going to look exactly like this as a final product. So without further ado, let's hop in and show how we can go about creating this from scratch. Okay, so we're over here in Synfig Studio. I'm using version 1.2.1, .1, and I'm going to go over to my browser here, and I'm just going to grab this SVG of the Google logo here that I found. So if I right click on this, I can save this as a file on my computer. I'm going to put it right on my desktop and press save. And then from there, if I go over to my desktop, I can grab this and I can just drag and drop this into Inkscape. So now that this file is in Inkscape, I'm just going to show that if I convert this file as is right now, it's going to have an error converting this into a file format that I can actually import into Synfig. So let me just demonstrate that. If I press File and I save this as, and I save it as a Synfig animation.sif file on my desktop, I'll get an error. So I save this. And then I see this traceback error here. Now I did some Googling before I started filming this video to see what was happening here. Really the easiest workaround for this is to kind of come in here and select your whole image here. So get all those paths. Now copy this and then go file new inside of Inkscape and just paste these objects into your new Inkscape file. So I pasted this in here. If you can zoom out, you can see that my document's a little bigger than an image. So I'm just gonna come and clean that up a little bit. I'll go to file. I'll go to Document Properties, then I'll go to Resize Page to Content, and I'll resize the page to the drawing. Now that jumps the document surrounding border down to the size of this image, and that looks good. I'm going to get out of here. And now if I come up and I go to File, Save As, and again, make sure Synfig Animation is chosen here, and I save this as drawing.sif to my desktop, this should work fine. So press Save. OK, I'm going to get out of Inkscape here going to close without saving. I'm going to get out of this other version I have here. Awesome, and then I have this drawing.sif file here on my desktop. So let's switch back over to Synfig here and let's import that file. So if I go to Synfig, and then I go to File, Import, and I grab this drawing.sif file and I import it. You can see I have this drawing here in my canvas. Now I could click on it and I could actually resize this here so this fits in like that. And one of the issues you're gonna notice here is even though we have all these individual layers, these paths can't be manipulated. So if I move these, you'll see an error here that we're trying to edit a composition. Let's close out of that. One way we can get around that is we could actually come here, click on one of the paths and hold down shift, click the last one, select all those paths that way, and then right click and just do a copy and then come up to your file and make a new canvas here. And then inside your new canvas, just do a control V to paste it. And you'll notice this pastes all those past individual layers here. Let's right click on those and let's group those. So let's right click and press group layer. And now we can come in here, we can click this group and we can resize this again to fit here. Now, if we were to come in here and we were to click and edit any of these individual nodes, you can see that we can manipulate those and there's no problem. I'm just going to press control Z to go back to where we were. Okay. And now we're looking okay here. I'm going to close out of this original animation. We don't really need that anymore. Close without saving. Okay. And here we go on this new canvas here. Basically what we want to do is we want to break each one of these colors into their own little circle to provide a Google like animation here. And the way we might start by doing that is to just add a keyframe to our timeline here. So I'm going to come here and let's say 48 frames and then I'm going to go to my keyframes panel and I'm just going to add a new keyframe there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start animating at this keyframe. So I'm going to press this animation mode here and I turn that on and essentially I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to move each one of these things. So in order to move these, I can't really move the whole object here. I can only change the shape of it. So I'm going to first convert all of these into switches. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say make group layer into switch. So I'm going to change that into a switch. I'm going to make each one of these a switch. So I'm going to come in here and create switches for all of them. And then I'm going to name the switches. So I'm going to come up to this first one. I'm going to name it red. I'm going to name the second one yellow. 
third one's green and then the last one here is going to be blue and that's just so I can keep track of this and then on each one of these switches if I click on them you'll see that even though I can move these around the little anchor point here is right in the middle of the image so I actually might want to just control and click on that green dot and just move it so it's on top of the switch so I can more easily see that this corresponds to the red one. If I click on the yellow here, again, I can come over and control click on this green circle and move it to the yellow swatch, click on green, do the same thing, and then click on blue and do something similar. Okay, so I'm gonna move these all to kind of the appropriate location here to convert these down into smaller circles here. So I'm gonna move these like this. And I might scale some of these, like for instance, this green one's taking up a lot of space. I might scale that down for now. Scale the blue down. Yellow is fine size right now, and then scale red down, okay. So we have these kind of in the, the correct positions at this point. If we were to turn off the animation and just play this, I could go back to the front of this here, and I could see that this would break them all up and moves them to the correct location. But really the next step here is we want, by the time they move to this location, they should each be small circles. So we have to actually change the shape of these. And that's where this gets a little tricky. So let's hop in and let's go to that keyframe again where they're supposed to end up here. And then let's start looking at the individual paths here. So inside the red path here, I'm gonna click on that. You can see that there's all these little points here. Now, in order to make a circle here, we really only need four points. So what I can come and do is I can start deleting some of these extra points. So let's come in here. I'm going to right click on this. and I'm going to say remove item smart. And I'm going to right, come over here, right click on this one as well, remove item. And I think there's two little nodes there, so I'm going to remove another one here. Okay, so we have, oops, I think there's sometimes there's duplicates here. You can see there's a couple little extra nodes. So let's come here, let's delete this as well, remove item. So we have one, two, how many do we have down here? So this is a little funky. I think we have these waypoints mixed up. They're supposed to be on that side, okay. One, two, three, four, and are we okay? Okay, so we have four points now. I think that is good. Oops, come back in here, let's get our path here. Let's just zoom in a little bit, see what's going on. This is a little funky here. Let's see what we're doing. I think we have that all set. Okay, so these are our four points that we're going to want to use to manipulate the image and change it into a circle. Now, if you want to, convert this into a perfect circle, playing with these points is, is quite difficult. So you could come down here and you could go to your parameters and you could click on any one of these individual vertexes and you could change the properties with them. You could change the origin of them. You could change their width. You can change the little tangent lines, which are these little hang off points. And you could make this a perfect circle that way. I actually like to just come and eyeball it and uh, by drawing an actual circle with the circle tool here. So if I come up here, I'm gonna grab the circle tool. And I'm actually gonna I'm gonna make a color here that we know is our template. So I'm gonna come in here and let's maybe just make this, let's see here. Let's make this like a, a dark gray color. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. And if I draw this circle here, I can draw a perfect circle. And let's say maybe we want it around this size. So I've now drawn a circle and let's, let's move this out of our red region here. We don't want it in there. Let's actually move it completely out of our group here. And let's just, I'm gonna scroll out here. Okay, so we have our circle up here. Let's grab this, let's move it down. It's rather large, this is larger than I wanted it to be. So um, let's just come here and let's just draw another one of these. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna grab my circle tool again. Let me zoom in here. I'm gonna draw another one of these. Maybe we want it around that size is good, I would say. There, we'll draw that. Okay, so now we can get rid of our initial large circle here. We don't need that anymore. So if we highlight that, we can come down here to the trash and we can remove it. Okay, so we have this circle here as our model. Now, this is a perfect circle since we drew it with that tool and the points are perfectly spread apart uh, as a radius from the center point and then these tangent lines here are perfectly straight and they're the right length. So we're just going to basically leave that there in the center and we're gonna draw our circle around this to make it uh, look exactly the same. So in here, let's make sure we're not on our switch. Let's grab our actual path here. And then the first thing we wanna do with a lot of these is we actually wanna change these tangent points so they are connected and they don't move independently. So I'm gonna right click on that and I'm just going to say merge tangents. 
And so now if I pull these out, the other one pulls out the same length. And if I turn them, they move exactly right across from each other. So that's what we want on each one of these points. So let's go through and again, we're going to adjust each one of these to do the same thing. So let's merge these tangents. And let's merge these tangents here. And let's merge this one on the left side as well. Right click and merge tangents. And then I'm just going to save my file. And I'm going to call this G animation. And I'm going to just save that on my desktop. Okay. And so let's come in here and let's start moving these points to the correct location. So in order to see both of the points here, you really want to be able to see the tangent lines that are drawn on this area here and the actual path here. So what we can do is we can come in here, let's highlight our path, and then let's hold down control and click this other area here so we can see both of those interactions. So now we can see exactly where the dots are and then we can see exactly what we're working with. So let's come here and let's just move this to be in the exact location and we gotta zoom in to make sure that we're getting close here. So that looks pretty close. I think we're about there if we put it right there. And then if we come out and we grab this point here and we move it so it, it aligns exactly with this tangent line, we should be pretty close on both sides since we locked those together. And I think we're good on that particular point. Let's come up here and let's get this a little bit closer as well. So it's going to look something like that. Let's just move this in. Actually, let's make it a little longer for now so I can make sure I'm grabbing the correct one. I'm going to move this in. Again, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, make sure we're on the correct place. And now that we're good there, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to drag this about at the right spot. Okay, so that looks good there. Let's do the same with the top. Again, I'm going to bring this out a little bit and I'm going to grab this. And then I'm going to drag this in. Okay. And then this last one I'm going to grab and I'm going to drag it in as well. And make sure that we have this drawn appropriately. Okay, so now you could come in and you could you could edit these individual points on the lower circle to be perfectly exact. I think this is close enough for our purposes, but you could always be a little more fine-grained if you wanted to. But now we can just go and we can drag our template over and we could draw the circle for other shapes as well. So if we wanted to move this red circle now that we've drawn it, so if it's not per perfectly aligned, we could come into our switch and we could just come and we could drag this to different... Oops. Oh, this, since we've already animated this, this is asking if we want to offset our animation. Let's say no, let's let's cancel out of this and let's go back here and let's turn on our animation. Since we're at our second keyframe here, this is where we want to be. We want this red dot to end up where the animation is. So let's turn our animation back on and let's just move this and make sure we're putting this in the correct location. I mean, it's, I think it's pretty close to where we want it actually. We can play with this at the end, but for now, let's just leave it somewhere like this. I think it's okay but we could always come back in here and we could change this later. So let's come and let's move this over here and let's replicate this process for these other shapes here.
Okay, so that's why we save our work. So my, my program there just crashed. Let's go back in and let's try to open that up again where we left off. Hopefully we weren't too far behind there. And then let's open recent and let's open this animation that we're working on. Let's make sure we come back here and let's make sure we go to our keyframe that we're on here. So we're gonna jump back to this keyframe. Okay, so it looks good. I think we actually made a mistake here. It looks like our first keyframe, unfortunately, since I was messing with some of that on the first keyframe, it looks like it, it drew it in here. That's that's too bad. Um, hmm. So you know what, since I, since I mistakenly did this on the first keyframe, I'm actually gonna go and I'm gonna import this uh, from the beginning, unfortunately. I think that's gonna be the easiest thing to do here. So let's uh, bear with me while I just go and I recreate this again. Okay, so this time around, let's make sure that we aren't editing anything on this initial keyframe. So let's go again, let's go to our 48th keyframe here. Let's add that keyframe in. And then if we jump to the beginning, everything's fine here. But let's turn on animate and let's jump to the new keyframe. And let's go through and let's go through that process again. So we're going to break everything into a switch and then move them to the appropriate locations. And now the reason we're actually going through this process of breaking these into individual circles and recreating the circle here is because you can't interpolate between two different layers in Synfig. So you can't just draw a circle and then make this object here become a circle. You have to actually make this become a circle itself. Unless you want to do some kind of trickery with like fading objects into the background or something. But we really want this object to become the final shape that we're actually playing around with. So let's come back in here and let's, let's do this process again. So I'm going to actually come in here. I'm going to edit all these paths to break it down into just four nodes, and then we'll do the same with all these other objects. So I'm going to come in, select my path. I'll right click and remove smart. Right click, remove smart. Remove the, the additional one there. Move this. Looks like we have another node here, a couple hidden nodes here. Let's remove it. And OK. So I think we have four points here now. Okay. Again, save your progress in case your program crashes. So make sure we're saving this. And let's draw our circle again. So let's come up, make sure our group's selected here so we don't paste the circle inside the group. Let's grab this circle tool. We have our black drawn again, and let's just make a circle around this size. And then we can come in here and we can move it. Let's move it here. And then let's, again, let's highlight our red path here. And then let's control click on the circle so we can get both those things going again. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in and start drawing this out. Again, remember to make these tangents merged so you can manipulate this a little easier and do that for each one of these red nodes here. So merge tangents. No, come on. Ugh. Keeps crashing. <laughs> so this is kind of frustrating. If we can get through the program without it crashing, this I think will be pretty cool, but let's see if we can do it. Let's just open up our animation here. Let's open our recent G2. Okay, so good. It's a, it's a full G at that point. Let's see what happens when we're over here. Okay, so it is kind of coming through here. That's good. Um, let's keep our animation on here. Let's come back. Let's draw our circle. Let's move it. Again, let's come in here. Let's try to draw this out. I think that's pretty good. Turn off my animation for a second. I'm just going to continuously save this so I don't accidentally end up with. Oops. Cancel. Let's turn our animation back on. Let's just make sure anything we're moving is part of the animation. Okay, that's fine. And we can ungroup these, get this guy, move it over here. Okay, let's start drawing over here.
And one thing to point out is you can easily tell which is your colored circle and which is the template here by the, the active circle that you're using has this dotted line. So like when I'm in this position here and it's hard to tell, you know, which one of these I should be moving, the one that's dotted is the one that you are trying to manipulate. So I can just grab the dotted one and pull that to the right location, grab the dotted one here and pull that to the right location because we don't want to adjust our template at all since that's already in the correct position. So grab this, pull this down again, grab the end of my dotted line, align it with the template, just bring it all the way around here. Okay, so now our circles are all drawn out and they should be close to perfectly round since we, we did this a little fast since we crashed a couple times and I want to just get through some of this stuff. So I'm, I'm going to actually come now and I'm going to just delete this circle. We don't need that anymore. So if I come in here, I can grab this. It highlights the circle over here in our layers and I can just hit the trash can. We don't need that anymore. So we'll get rid of that. And we can turn off our animation here for a second and we can just take a look at what this looks like. So if we come back to our start here and we play this, we can see that these move over into individual circles. So they move from those objects into individual circles. Now we could come and we might want to reposition these. I think we might want them to be a little bit smaller to be honest. So we're moving them like this. Well, that's probably fine for now. Let's, let's give this a shot. But let's actually, when we come here at this last keyframe, let's make sure that these are positioned correctly. So I think the blue, oops, so we, let's cancel all this. Let's make sure our animation is on before we do that. Turn our animation on. Let's move this blue section here. Let's come to our green. Let's align that. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna control, click and move the width, the anchor point there for the yellow so I can put it in the center. And then position that and the red as well I think hmm these might be spaced out a little funny let's just move them all a little bit more like this you can play a lot with the final position in there I think that's okay for now and so if we come back and let's just turn off our animation here and let's play this again let's see what this looks like okay so that shoots out now, one thing I think that's happening here is actually, when I'm looking at this animation here in this second keyframe, I think it's a, it's a little slow. So I might wanna do something like just grabbing this and moving it up to maybe the 24th frame. So I'm just gonna grab this. I'm gonna move this up here. And let's just see what that looks like now if we go to the beginning of time and look at it. Okay, so it's a little faster, right? So if we come here, we can see that it just shoots out a little bit faster like that. Let's make sure we save our work here. And then we can come and maybe we want to add another keyframe at 48 here. And or actually, do you know, I think what we want to do is we want to have each one of these little dots just jump up and then come back down into place. So just kind of like jump up, come back down, jump up, come back down, jump up, come back down. So we might want to just come in here and let's see, we could maybe do this at keyframe here so I'm going to add a new keyframe here and then at this keyframe I'm going to animate this so this jumps up like this something like that and then let's add a new keyframe at 48 and let's say at this keyframe let's have this jump back down to the correct position and let's grab this other one and let's have this one jump up there. Okay, we'll call that good. And then let's go maybe another few frames and let's add another keyframe here. And then let's have this jump back down. And let's grab this green and let's have this one jump up. And then let's go to 72 keyframes and let's add one more. So we're going to keep adding plus to our keyframe. And at this one, we're going to have this one jump back down. 
something like that. And again, you might want to be more accurate with your calculations. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Um, so it's not going to be exact, but I think you get, get the picture of what we're trying to do here. Oh, try to position that. Okay, that's good enough. And we'll have this one jump up here. Okay, something like that. I'm going to move this point here so it's a little easier to, okay, call it maybe like that. And then let's, again, let's jump forward a few keyframes, add another one, then have this one just jump back down at the end here. And so we'll move this back down like that. So we've added a lot of little transitions there to our animation. Let's turn off our keyframes and, and just run that. So we're going to turn off the animation mode. I'm going to save this. And let's just come back here and let's run this from the beginning and see what happens here. So our G hops out into little circles and then we kind of jump through like that. Okay, so it's a, you know, I think it's, you get the picture, it's a little bit choppy, but you know, you could play with this and you could play with the interpolation settings. So right now you can, we're using a clamped interpolation, but you can change the way these actually move in between different states. So you could do like an ease in or an ease out if you want to play with those a little bit and maybe smooth some of that out. One thing we might want to do is at the very end here, we actually might want to just convert this back to the initial logo here. So what we could do is we can come back to our, our first keyframe here and then just jump forward on the timeline to about where you want this up here. So since we did a transition that was like 24 frames here, we might want to do something similar when we jump back. So I'm just going to put my mouse here on the timeline and I'm going to come here and I'm going to duplicate this keyframe. So I'm going to duplicate keyframe at that period of time. So it goes back to that G. Now let's see how this looks if we play this all the way from the beginning. So we come here, we play, the G is going to break up, it's going to jump through like that, and then it's going to transition back into the G. Okay, so let me save that. I think that looks pretty good overall. Let's just grab this and let's actually convert this into an exportable file so we can just see what this looks like all together. So I'm going to come up here to file and I'm going to render this out and I'm going to render this as an AVI file. I'm gonna use the auto target and I'm gonna put it on my desktop and let's just say, okay, G2 AVI, let's render this. And if I switch back to my desktop here, you can see this, it looks like it's still rendering a little bit. Okay, that looks like maybe it's set now. So if I double click on this, hey, you can see our animation, there it goes. We made something like the Google animation and you could loop this infinitely, you know, if you wanted to. So it just keeps popping out, goes back to the G and then, you know, comes back in here, breaks out to little individual dots, does the thing and then goes back. So that's basically how you would create an animated logo. We use Google as an example. I kind of modified some of what they do in their typical animations, but it's similar to something like that. Feel free to implement this on your own logos or your client work. And hopefully this tutorial is helpful for you to understand how to do that process using open source and free software. All right, thank you for watching. If you like these Synfig animation tutorials, please let us know by commenting down below and give this video a like just so YouTube knows to share this with other folks who are interested in this type of content. All right, thanks, take care.